Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go through premature atrial contractions and what you might see as a nurse. Welcome to CASRN, where I teach you about all things nursing. We're going to cover the causes of PACs, what your assessment should look like, and any interventions that you should be done, and then of course as always we practice. So a premature atrial contraction is also called a PAC. They're usually non-life threatening and they do happen when a pacemaker cell in the atria that is close to the SA node fires sooner than it should. So it's an extra heartbeat that begins in the atria. We're gonna look at this EKG here so that you can understand what this is gonna look like and visualize it as we go through this lecture. So when a pacemaker cell that's close to the SA node fires early, it causes an extra heartbeat. So as you can see here, that in these two circled heartbeats right here, they're earlier, they're sooner than they should be. They don't match up with the other part of the rhythm. And then you're going to see a compensatory pause that's where the system kind of reset, resets and that SA node is like, oh, okay, back to the regular rhythm and it's going to beat normally. So some of the causes that you're going to see with PAC are coronary artery disease, dehydration, digoxin toxicity, electrolyte imbalances, fatigue, hypoxia, infection, stimulants, and stress. Things that you might find in your assessment is that your patient is feeling anxious, they're diaphoretic, they're ha experiencing palpitations or a skipping a beat, they're having dizziness or lightheadedness, shortness of breath, and then what you want to do is make sure that you're determining the underlying rhythm as well as this and determining your frequency of your PACs. More often than not, no tre treatment is necessary for PACs, especially if the patient's not having any symptoms. But this is where the assessment comes in and we want to make sure that we're digging into that and we're finding what the underlying cause is. So we want to dig into the patient's history and find any precipitating factors or like what they were doing before the symptoms started to find out possible causes. So some of the some of these possible causes are going to be dehydration, digoxin toxicity, hypoxia, infection, and stimulants, right? So we've already talked about that. What we would want to do is if our patient is experiencing dehydration, we're going to rehydrate them. If they're having digoxin toxicity, we need to hold that digoxin and decrease the dosage that they're getting. If they're hypoxic, we want to make sure we give them oxygen. If they have an infection and it's treatable, then we want to make sure that we can treat that. And then if stimulants are the cause, then we want to remove that away from our patients. Then our nursing interventions, as always, are going to include that in-depth assessment. We're going to look at their level of consciousness, see if their pulses are palpable, making sure that we're monitoring their vital signs, particularly their heart rate and their blood pressure. We may do some medication administration that could include beta blockers. We're going to want to make sure that we have an IV access and a 12 lead going. And then education is always once our patient is settled, we want to go in and educate them about any new medications they may be prescribed, the signs and symptoms of their condition, and then when to contact the provider or call 911. So let's go through some practice. But before we get too far into this, I want you to understand that PACs are going to have an underlying rhythm. You can't have PACs alone. If you try to tell someone that the rhythm is premature atrial contractions, they're going to look at you funny. So we need to identify our underlying rhythm first, and then we can say we have like normal sinus rhythm with PACs or sinus bradycardia or sinus, sinus tachycardia with PACs. The best way in this situation to get your rate is going to be an apical pulse, but we obviously can't do this because we don't have a real patient to do that on. So for our purpose, this is a six second strip. So if you look right here, each one of these marks a second. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, to start off, we're gonna count our heartbeats like always. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so in this case, we've got our seven, times 10, which is gonna equal 70. And so that is actually normal, right? So our rate is normal. So right now we're looking at a normal sinus rhythm. Then we wanna check out our rhythm to see if it is in fact normal as far as rhythm goes, if it's regular or irregular. So in this case, we're not, we're gonna look at some that don't have our PACs, which a PAC is right here and a PAC is right here. So we're going to count right here. So we've got 
5, 10, 15, 20, 21, 22. So we've got 22 right here. We're going to count again. 5, 10, 15, 20, 21, close enough, right? So we're going to say that our we're regular, but then we're also going to look at our PACs. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, right there. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to get 5, 10, 11, 12, 13 as well. So we are going to be regular and irregular. Then we're going to look at our QRS complex and see if it's below the 0 0.12. So we'll come down here and we'll count this. So we've got a 1, 2, 3 right there. 1, 2, 3 right there. We've got a 1, 2, 3 right there. So each of those small squares, 0 0.04, we're going to multiply that by 3, and that's going to give us 0 0.12. Then we've got our PR interval, and we want it to fall in between the 0 0.12 and the 0 0.20. So we're going to come over here and find our P wave. And we're going to say 1, 2, 3 right there. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So we're going to have a 0 0.12 here as well. So that's normal, and that's normal. And then we've got our PQRS ratio. Do we have all of that? We've got a PQRST, PQRST, PQRST. So that is also normal. So we come back up here and we're going to reevaluate this. So this is normal. This is not. Everything else is looking like it's normal. So we're just going to have a normal sinus rhythm with PACs. And then make sure that you're understanding how often those are occurring because then you can go to your provider and say, hey, my patient's having PACs. And then you always want to make sure if you know what their symptoms are or if they're asymptomatic. So PACs are an earlier early atrial contraction that produces an early heartbeat. As the nurse, you need to assess your patient, patient and look for any signs or symptoms of distress. And then your treatment, if they're asymptomatic, is just going to be monitoring. If they're symptomatic, then we're going to look at giving them beta blockers. Thanks for tuning in. Please help me grow my channel by clicking subscribe and follow below. 